So we can use hypothesis tests to compare the proportions from two different populations as well. So we'll have some assumptions. Uh, the samples have to be random, samples are independent, and then for both samples, n times p and n times q is greater than or equal to 5. Um, okay, so what that means is that right, this is the number of people with the characteristic. So n times p is the number of people who have the characteristic that, right, the proportion you're interested in. n times q, the number who don't have it. So both of those have to be, right, 5 or more. So you have to have at least 5 people who do and at least 5 people who don't. Okay, um, I'm going to use the p-value method. Remember, p-value, if the p-value is small, and we'll say small is less than or equal to alpha, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And if your p-value is big, and by big we mean just greater than alpha, we will uh, do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples here. So in a random sample of 200 men, 130 said they used seatbelts. So I think um, this is an old example I have back. I think almost everybody wears seatbelts now, right? It's so funny to watch the progression of questions. Um, even right up to like five years ago, it was about how many people had cell phones. And it's like, it's not 100% now, right? So back in the olden days, right, 50% would be the numbers, which is super funny. Okay, um, in a random sample of 300 women, 63 said they use seatbelts. Test the claim that men are more safety conscious than women. Okay, so I'm going to have to pay attention when I go to write that alternative hypothesis. So identify our populations. So men and women, right? Men and women in cars. And we're talking about proportion. So it's not explicitly said here. So that's a little bit confusing, but there's nothing about means or averages. So it's the number of people who have a certain characteristic. That's a proportion. So the proportion of men equals the proportion of women. So remember the null hypothesis always gets the equal. And then I know that my alternative has the piece of M and the piece of W. So now I said I was going to have to be careful, so here I am being careful. Men are more safety conscious, so that would be the proportion of men who wear their seatbelts is greater than the proportion of women, more safety conscious. So I had to kind of um, make an assumption there, read into that question, right? what that meant. Okay, so gather the data. So we have our men and we have our women. And what do I need? I need an N for men and an X for M. Notice it's not an X bar, it's just an X. It's the number who have that characteristic. Not an average, it's the actual number in your group. I think that's all I need. And then I need the same thing for the women. I need the number of women and I need the number of women who wear their seatbelts from our sample. So it was 200 men and 130 and then women would asked 300 and only 63. Oh, this is going to be out the door. Um, and let's see. Oh, if you wanted, you could do this. And our, I think our calculator is going to tell it for us. So I'll just get a set up. So the P hat, right? This is the proportion from your sample. We put the little hat on the P. So P hat sub M and P hat sub W. Okay, grab our calculators. So now we have uh, two proportions. Two proportions are a Z test. So stat tests two proportion z test item six okay. so we need to tell it x sub one and n sub one x sub one and so they're in a different order than i wrote them down so go ahead and get yours um, in the right order if you get them in the wrong order don't worry your calculator will yell at you and say hey you've given me something that's not really a probability Okay, here's where we put in our alternative hypothesis. So P sub 1 is greater than P sub 2, right? Men greater than women. And enter. So that first line is your alternative hypothesis. Second line is your test value if you were going traditional method. Third line there, where can I fit it? Third line, that is our P value. So 2.1. And hopefully you're all yelling at me, look to the right far over here, times 10 to the negative 23. That is such a small, small p-value, right? Insanely small. Really, really small. 
So we will heartily reject that null hypothesis. They are not the same, right? There is a highly significant difference. in the proportion. Oh, and I get tired of writing. You know what I'm going to say. Proportion of men who wear seatbelts. OK, example two. Two types of medication are being tested to determine if there's a difference in the proportion of patients who experience side effects. OK. In a random sample, I might go ahead and, and start gathering all my information on the first read through here. Okay. In a random sample of 100 patients receiving drug A, so I've got drug A and drug B. So for drug A, the sample size was 100. And the number who had the characteristic of side effect was 10. That's all. OK, so then, oh, I forgot to write that from before. So N sub B and X sub B. Uh, let's see, in a group of 120 patients receiving drug B, 35 had side effects, and alpha is 0 0.01. Can it be concluded that there is a difference? OK, so percent, so percent with drug A equals, has to be an equals because it's the null. Is there a difference? The two proportions are not the same. I'll use the other version of um, our conclusion here. So population one will be the people who got drug A, population two will be drug B. So I kind of worked from the bottom up on that one, didn't I? Calculator. I was just noticing that I hadn't written my p hats from above, so I'm going to go ahead and write those down just in case somebody wants to know. So 65% for men and 21% for women. It just happened to be hanging out there, so I grabbed it. Okay, so we're going to run that same test. So um, edit or stat tests two proportion z. X sub one is 10, and sub one is 100. So that was my a, right? That's I chose to be one. B will be the twos, 35 out of 120. My alternative is not equal to, so change that. And then hit enter, and there's our p value, 4.49 times 10 to the negative 4. Again, a very small p value. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis, right? That is less than alpha. So we reject the null hypothesis. There is enough evidence. So we're rejecting the null. So we're going to support our claim. The percent of patients with side effects is different.